Hello and welcome to Koblenz, Germany. I'm Kaz de Mores and I'm here to learn about the latest generation of the longest running road bike in the Canyon portfolio. It was first introduced at Eurobike 2004. It was, and still remains, as the pinnacle of road performance. And it's a bike that many would describe as a pure classic road bike. It's been ridden to world championships, grand tours, and even monumental victories. It's a model that represents and embodies the excellence of the Canyon brand, with the approach to creating the absolute best. I can only be speaking about the ultimate. It's all out to try and make it to the finish line. He's going to be wearing the rainbow jersey. He's pushing on. He wants this. He's going to get it. Carapaz is absolutely flying now. Even on the toughest of terrain, in the most desperate of conditions. The rest of them are racing for silver. It's going to take a wonderful victory. And here it is, ladies and gentlemen, the fifth generation ultimate. And I'm so pleased that I'm joined by Matthias, the road product manager. Matthias, this has been a long time coming, hasn't it? Absolutely. And it's really great to seeing this product um, already being launched now. And I've seen this launch video several yeah. times. It still gives me goosebumps. I bet. I bet. I've got to ask you, because there's so much pressure when you're launching a new bike. But when you think of the ultimate, there's so much heritage, the success after success. How does Canyon handle the pressure of elevating the standard? Yeah, you already named it. This bike has a strong legacy with being the first Canyon road bike in our portfolio back in 2004. We wanted to take this legacy in the development process and really step one, one step ahead um, with integrating all the knowledge we have, all the improvement we've made over the years and really uh, make this bike um, a classy looking bike but yeah. still with all the integration, all the knowledge that we have um, to a complete bike. Now, would I be wrong in saying it's not just a climber's bike, it's got the perfect balance. So if that's right, how and why? Yeah, you're absolutely right. Um, developing this bike, we wanted to uh, combine all the elements that make a, a, a road bike a beautiful bike, okay. such as design, um, stiffness, weight, aerodynamics, comfort. And um, these marrying to being one bike that we stay in front of was a big challenge, but yet it, it was the, the good challenge that we made during the, the process. So then style-wise, who is this for? Style-wise, um, I think it has a pretty broad uh, audience out there mm -hmm. because it's for, um, of course, our pro sport uh, guys and, and women. Uh, it has pro sport DNA in it, but yet still all ambitious riders out there, everybody who wants to go uh, flat out fun or all the pro coffee riders out there as well. I love that, pro coffee riders. So, Matthias, you touched on pro athletes. How important is it to have their input in the developmental stage? Oh, for us, it's really valuable to, to have our pro sports uh, teams around here. Okay. Um, so we use their feedback in like every development stage. For the early stage, um, we had their feedback that the aero ge geometry is working well. So we adopted the very same geometry for this bike so they can swap 
for every race. Nice. And then, of course, um, s stability, stiffness-wise, um, the, the input in the early stage of the layup of the frame is really important for us too. And then in the field testing area, they use the bike like no one else. They ride through the cobbles, they ride downhill really yeah. fast. And um, having this bike tested by all these pro riders now makes us confident that it's ready to launch. Now, I don't want to put you on the spot, <laughs> but I couldn't find this bike on the women's specific line. So sh surely it's not just a man's bike, though. You're right. Um, we opened the portfolio for everyone. We don't want to exclude anybody. Okay. We want to have an inclusive unisex portfolio um, with a br pretty broad size range, ranging from 3XS to XXL. We have a lot of sizes out there that will suit anyone and anybody. So then my next question, my last question is, what makes it so fun to ride? Oh, I think the combination of all these factors, like it's pretty light, it's uh, pretty fast aerodynamic-wise, it's pretty comfy, it looks really astonishing. So I think this combination of all these factors makes it so fun to ride and will make you smile on the very first day out this. Matthias, thank you so much for speaking to me. We've heard from the product manager, but now let's hear from a pro athlete who has been riding and is giving us his opinion on the fifth generation ultimate. It is, of course, Enric Maas. Los últimos años o el último año, el 2021, hemos, hemos estado con la Aerobike que, que todo el equipo la estaba usando y ahora este 2022 nos han traído esta, esta bici que es espectacular. Justo antes de, de Dufiné la, la probamos y es una bici para mí de las mejores que he probado. Tiene los ángulos eh, perfectos para, para ir rápido para arriba, para ir seguro para abajo y rápido por el llano. Pues sí, nos, nos, bueno, a mí personalmente me enviaron o, o Cañón o el equipo nos envió la bici bastante pronto para que nos, nos hiciéramos a ella y fue justo después de, de las clásicas. Nos enviaron un prototipo de color negro que algunos nos sacaban unas fotos y <ríe> no se podían subir, pero bueno, y, y poco a poco pues eh, me he ido encontrando muy bien y ahora pues finalmente tenemos estos colores que son los colores del equipo que, que para mí es... Es guapísimo. We've heard there from Enric Mars, but now I'm really pleased to be joined by Jasper Philipson from Team Alpsin de Kunik. Jasper, how are you? And thank you for being here. I'm good, thank you. Uh, nice to be here. I've got to start by talking to you about the Tour de France because I feel like that is the pinnacle and I want to know what your emotions were like in 2019 before your first ever tour. First ever tour would be something special. Uh, yeah, for sure it's, a, it's a, the nicest race in cycling, the biggest race. Mm. And uh, to be there at the start line is already yeah, a great achievement uh, and a great milestone to... Uh, yeah, to take as a as a young professional, it was my first professional year, um, and I was just it was just last minute decided that I would go to the Tour de France. So, yeah, it was um, was was really cool uh, to be there and and was with my eyes open uh, eleven <laughs> days, enjoying yeah. and uh, also suffering for sure. What was it like to get that call, and where were you? Uh, I can't remember. I think uh, I probably was just at home. But uh, we planned uh, our holiday trip in July with the family uh, because normally my races were were done already. And then they called me for for the Tour de France. And then your plans change, of course. And it's uh, it will be it, it was a holiday in France. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a, that's a good alternative, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Maybe not quite the holiday for you. No bike holiday, but. <laughs> <laughs> and let's talk about your first podium finish. How excited were you then? First podium finish was 2021, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, there was also an emotional tour, but uh, yeah, as a sprinter, you always aim for the win. And I think I ended, ended this tour six times on, uh, on the podium. So 
yeah without without any win so it was more disappointment than really uh yeah than than that it felt like a great achievement or or something like or something to be proud of it was more <laughs> yeah missing the missing the win in the tour de france where you aim for and where you work hard for that was uh yeah more the disappointment feeling that it was coming through but uh i think that also made me stronger and made me also um work harder for what was coming in the next years and then with this year as well that's such an athlete response that you don't feel like you won the second or third but you lost the first yeah sure <laughs> um well now let's talk about when you did win paris Champs elysees lifting your arms i mean that must have felt like a childhood dream come true yeah that was something to, they will always uh remember and is there is there a uh, one sprint that i would like to or prefer to uh win in the tour de france and Sure, it will be uh, the Champs Elysees, but then you have to wait also 21 stages. So, yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's the, it's a, it's a long way to to be there and to get there uh, to sprint for the win. And um, yeah, this year uh, everything everything came out well, and uh, to to finish the Tour de France there on the iconic Champs Elysees with uh, the arms up was was something special. And then, of course, now your team are competing in the Vuelta. And we've just seen that Jay Vine has won his first pro race and it was on the Ultimate. I mean, it seems like a match made in heaven. Yeah, I think Jay, uh, for his first professional win and f also for the team on the new Ultimate uh, was something was something special. I think also with the streak uh, we're doing in Grand Tours uh, and since... Since two years, we always won at least one stage in every Grand Tour, and yeah, Jay is uh, conti continuing the story with uh, for for us for Alps in the Kuning. So um, I think it's uh, yeah, it's uh, it's been already great for us so far. And now we've talked about the bike having, or we've heard about the bike having the perfect balance and how you strive for that when you're cycling and races. But you personally, as an athlete, how do you strive to have the perfect balance between your career and training and then the off season and your personal life? Yeah, I think to find the balance is really key as a, as a professional athlete. Um, of of the bike, of the trainings, uh, when I have some time off, try to relax, uh, try to do things that I like, and that it also feels no obligation uh, when I have to go on the bike again and have to mm. suffer again. You yeah, you just need to uh, like what you're doing, and and then also uh, yeah, the results and and your best perform uh, best possible performance as an athlete will also come. But that's uh, sure something possible. Uh, sure something important that you that you like what you're doing and and also um, yeah try to uh, switch off when you're not uh, when you're not performing on the bike. Nice. Now I've got to talk to you a little bit about the ultimate, but I know that you're a sprinter. When might you choose to ride the ultimate bike? Uh, it will be probably the first time. Next year in the classics, uh, that, that I would choose for the ultimate as, as riding over the com uh, over the cobblestones would be a bit more uh, comfortable yeah. comparing to the super stiff I rode, um, and yeah probably maybe also when I struggle a lot in the mountains uh, to get a little bit more lighter weight and uh, to get me through the mountains more more eco. <laughs> well, Jasper, it's been an absolute pleasure speaking to you. So thank you for coming in. Thank you. It was <laughs> was fun. Now let's get to know the ultimate bike a little bit more intricately. Here's the engineering edit. Well, from the engineering video, it's only fitting that I'm joined by Lucas, who is the engineer behind the Ultimate. We're going to talk about your baby, your protege. Yes, of course. The first thing that comes to my mind is the design. It's slick, it's clean, it's simple, but I still recognize that it's part of the Ultimate family. Was that on purpose? Yes, absolutely. Our clear intention was to 
include with the latest generation ultimate um, the latest technology while still retaining this let's almost say iconic silhouette that's easily recognizable yeah. as a Kenyan ultimate um, it's a familiar shape and we've done so in a beautiful way in that logical engineering makes for a very sleek and clean design mm. um, without any, any unnecessary changes in geometry. It's a flat, it's a simple, it's a reduced, it's a minimalist yeah. design, um, which is still recognizable as an ultimate. Absolutely. And of course, we keep hearing it's the perfect balance. It's the perfect balance. How and why? Well, yeah, with, with the bike, we have different attributes, which okay. are mutually compromising. Um, this being weight, aerodynamics, stiffness, robustness, and comfort. Okay. Yes. So when we're talking about weight, this thing is still incredibly light. And we did manage to achieve our original goal of um, creating a rideable, race-ready SLX frame set um, that comes in at just the UCI limit of 6.8 kilograms. So with okay. CFR, we go even lighter and um, created a frame set that gives the pro riders a lot more choice um, nice. in choosing the components that they want to ride while still um, coming in at the UCI limit. So weight usually compromises durability and robustness. Okay. But we did make a conscious choice of adding about 30 grams of extra material in key locations, um, meaning seat stays, chain stays, and the top tube. Um, because we learned from working with the pros and from overload testing in our own lab mm -hmm. um, about key areas that tend to fail early, earliest in crashes and overload cases. And then okay. the robustness doesn't compromise the comfort because um, our frame set is still very comfortable. And you as a rider now have the choice of fine tuning your need or your level of comfort. And that gives you the ability to choose up to 32 millimeter tire width. I love that. So what has improved? I mean, you've talked about some improvements, yes. but what yes. else has improved? So what you can see clearly, we did integrate the cables and we, that makes for an aerodynamic benefit. And we did work together with the experts from Swiss side on this bike yet again um, to eventually reach a frame set aerodynamic drag improvement of okay. about 10 watts at 45 kilometers an hour, which comes obviously from the cable integration, but mm -hmm. also then from a specially D-shaped seat tube and seat post. And we did redesign the entire fork um, to gain aerodynamic advantage. So the fork legs are different, the crown of the fork is raised, and then the cross-section profiles of head tube and down tube and seat stays is also optimized. And then just looking at the stiffness um, we also increased the CFR frame's head tube stiffness by about 15%. So now all our frames across all our levels um, will receive top score stiffness values. I was going to ask you about stiffness, but you've answered my question. But then does that affect the fit and the handling? Yes. So uh, top scoring um, stiffness frame makes for an incredibly maneuverable and agile Bike. So this bike okay. is controllable on steep climbs. It's very controllable on descents. So when we talk about the fit, um, we did adapt the Aeroads cockpit, meaning that mm -hmm. now on the new Ultimate, you have a with adjustable cockpit, um, which is also height adjustable without having to cut the steerer. And then in terms of geometry, we choose to adapt the Aeroads geometry, giving the pro riders the freedom of choice to choose between either the Ultimate or the Aeroad, depending on the type of race that they're going to race. Okay, and choice is always good. Yes. <laughs> it can never be a bad thing. My last question, I know that there are some gear-specific products just for this bike, but is there one that stands out? Yes, absolutely, and I'm, I brought it with me. It's uh, our new Garmin and Wahoo mount, which Clearly, you can see it's a little different than usually. Um, it is completely 3D printed, made in Germany. Um, nice. We did develop it together with BASF, and um, it just comes in at 17 grams. Oh, yeah, that's very which light. Which is incredibly light. So light. Matching the Ultimate's uh, theme overall here. <laughs> um, but 
again, it matches the Ultimate's theme. It's very robust. So this thing has been tested on Paris-Roubaix cobbles and performed flawlessly there. Oh, so, fantastic. Yes. Because if, if, it can ta if it can pass that task, yes. then it's doing really well. 100%. This is an, uh, it's a simple product, but it's, if you look at it closely, it's an engineering piece of art. Lucas, thank you so much. It's been so fascinating to hear all of the insights on the fifth generation Ultima. But now we're going to hear from a pro rider who rode this bike at the Tour de France fam, and she's a massive fan of this Ultima. It is, of course, Cassia Nevyadoma. Ultimate is my go-to bike, and it always has been, actually. Uh, the new generation has taken it to another level, and it already carried me to two different volumes. Uh, racing this bike in iconic races up very legendary climbs make me feel very empowered, very independent and powerful. We heard from Cassia there, but if you would like to know more information and details on the Ultima, then please go to canyon.com. And it's not just the Ultima, you can also see all the other bikes and models that we have available. From everyone here at Canyon, we'd like to say a big thank you and goodbye for now. <laughs>